I want to make sure all of you watching this video are subscribed to us here at Chat Sports because we will have NBA trade deadline covered, but it starts now. We will have the latest NBA trade rumors leading up to that February deadline. So if you don't want to miss a beat in the NBA, make sure you hit that sub button. All right, what's up, Hoopers? I'm Nick Roloff of Chat Sports. And as I mentioned, we're going to have you covered with the latest NBA trade rumors happening around the association. And that's what we're talking about on today's show. And we'll start with Donovan Mitchell because the rumors never stop with the Spida. And obviously, he was traded a couple years ago from Utah to Cleveland. And now the rumors of him getting dealt again are hotter than ever. And the first look at Donovan Mitchell is that we basically know that he doesn't want to sign a long-term extension in the land. So does that mean he's going to be dealt? What is the situation? Or is he going to hit free agency in a couple of years? Well, the thing is, as the deadline approaches in a month or two, the Cavs might be struggling. Evan Mobley and Darius Garland are both out for the extended period of time. A couple guys out for six to eight weeks. And if the Cavs struggle leading up to the beginning of February, say they're five games under 500, say they're six games, like if it, they, they're really struggling, right? They're the 10 seed in the Eastern Conference. Could they decide to cash in on Donovan Mitchell at this year's NBA trade deadline if they know themselves they are not going to sign him to a long-term extension? Well, ESPN's Kevin Pelton mentioned the latest surrounding Donovan Mitchell. He said right now, D. Mitch would clearly be the biggest star available for a trade, accelerating the bidding war among teams that could reasonably expect to extend or re-sign him. In particular, the Nets, Knicks, and Heat fit that group. And if you remember just a few years ago, when he was dealt to Cleveland, these three teams made the most sense for Donovan Mitchell back then. Honestly, it was, both, it was mostly the Knicks and Heat were who were in that thick of things for Donovan Mitchell, but... It is intriguing to think of the possibilities of these three teams going after Mitchell in February rather than waiting for the offseason. And would that accelerate the price? Would that create a bidding war? You'd have to assume so. And then when you really think about what each team has to offer and where those respective teams are in their competitive process right now, I really think it only comes down to two teams on this three-team list which I'll talk about in just a second. But name the team that should trade for Donovan Mitchell. Should it been or be one of the three teams I just mentioned? Or should it be a different team in the NBA? Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section right now. I'll say this. I think the most ideal fit from a basketball standpoint is the Miami Heat. But when you think of the most realistic option... And more likely, I think it's the New York Knicks. Let's dive into why I think the Heat are the most ideal fit. You look at their top 10, their rotation. Their starting lineup, now that they're fully healthy, should be Lowry, Hero, Jimmy, Caleb, Martin, and Bam Adebayo with Duncan, Triple J, Jaime Hawkes Jr., Jay Rich, Haywood Highsmith, and Kevin Love coming off the bench. But you'd imagine they trade Tyler Hero in a deal. And the question is, Will they be willing to include Jaime Hawkes Jr., who has been probably the third best rookie this year behind Chet Holmgren and Victor Wembanyama, which would make Jaime Hawkes right now the second best rookie from the 2023 NBA draft class, by the way. But would they be able to get Nikola Jovic also in that deal? Would you be able to convince Cleveland of Hero, Jovic, maybe Caleb Martin as well, alongside two or three first-round picks to get Donovan Mitchell, and if that is the case, then you've got a starting lineup of Kyle Lowry, Donovan Mitchell, Jimmy, Bam, and if you're able to keep Pacquiao, you have him maybe slotting in at that power forward position. You have the dynamic playmaker in the perimeter, in that backcourt in Donovan Mitchell. You have the wing in Jimmy, the big man in Bam Adebayo. It, to me, makes the most sense for Miami to try to acquire him because you'd be able to then keep D. Mitch around long-term who is known to like the Miami area, his best friends with Bam Adebayo, the fit between Donovan Mitchell and Miami makes the most sense to me on the basketball court 
and extending him long term because of his relationship with Bam and his love for the city of Miami. It makes the most sense. It's just a question of is their trade package good enough to get D. Mitch? Now let's look at the Knicks because their starting lineup when healthy. Mitchell Robinson out for an extended period of time. But this is currently their lineup if they were fully healthy. Brunson, DiVincenzo, Barrett, Randall, Mitchell Robinson with a solid bench of four guards slash one wing and Josh Hart. Quickly, Grimes, McBride, the Air Force. Or Josh Hart, we'll just skip that. Isaiah Hartenstein as well. I was going to say aforementioned, but I just, you know, really got tongue-tied there. But when you think of the Mitchell trade offers and what they can get, the Heat can offer the best young player and Tyler Hero because assuming that the Knicks keep Randall in that deal, Hero is better than R.J. Barrett right now. That is just a fact but they can't offer as many picks as New York. They have a boatload of picks. A lot of them are lottery protected out in the Big Apple. But uh, the question is, what do the Cavs prefer? Would they rather get more picks in a questionable young guy in R.J. Barrett, who even Knicks fans have been starting to go after for his inefficiencies to help them win? Or would you rather have the younger player that is better in Tyler Hero and maybe only two to three first-round picks rather than the Knicks' five picks that they can potentially offer. It's intriguing to see what Cleveland will ultimately do. And coming up on today's show, we will have more NBA trade rumors. And I'm looking specifically at Lori Marketed. Yeah, that's a hot name coming up this NBA season. But first, got to show some love to our sponsor over at Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports platform in North America. I play them every day, and you should too. It's Daily Fantasy made easy. You just pick two to six player stat projections, and you can watch the winnings roll in, choosing more than or less than. And you can pick daily basis. You could also, if you just flash forward or flash back a little bit, pick season-long projections. And I pulled these up, and I wanted to see where things start. Because Anthony Edwards, I thought this was going to be a breakout season for him. He's been right there. He's flirting with 26 a game, but he's really got to have a strong finish of the year in the final 50, 60 games to be able to get that 26 mark. Paolo Bancaro, they've been playing some balanced basketball over in Orlando. We'll see if he gets more than 21.8 points per game. He's not there yet. We see if we get there. Probably not. They play really well-balanced brand. And then Bam, more than 9.3 rebounds a game, which he currently is over right now. So hopefully we will be able to keep them more than on 9.3 Bam at a bio rebounds. Join me, rapper Meek Mill, comedian Andrew Schultz, over at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Get that first deposit match up to $100 with prize picks. It's daily fantasy sports made fun. All right, let's talk about Lori Marketing, because could he be on the move out of Utah? Because reports have indicated that the Jazz no longer view Lori Marketing as an untouchable trade piece. They originally did, but maybe if a team comes calling, they could get Lori Marketing out of Utah. And to me, Marketing is going to be someone who's going to be coveted around the league, because there is going to be a lot of interest from contenders, from building teams to get a guy who's 6'10", 6'11", can score 23 a night, can space the floor offensively while providing, I say, average defense. It's not the worst, but it's also not the best. And when you look at what marketing has been able to do this year, and this is at the time of filming, in 18 games, shooting 48% from the field, 38% from beyond the arc, as the number one guy in Utah. And I just think when you – realistically look at what contenders need. It feels like a stretch big at the power forward position is always a position of need. There are maybe three or four teams in the NBA that wouldn't like to have marketing services, and those teams are like the Minnesota Timberwolves who already have a couple big men. The Raptors come to mind because they have so many front court pieces, but obviously the Raptors aren't going to be trading for Lloyd Marketing. But the reason why we're talking about him is because Jake Fisher, our good friend and producer Coop's favorite person on the planet, said Lori Marketing has indeed emerged as a fascinating, albeit unlikely, trade candidate before February's buzzer. The Jazz are by no means expected to trade the seven-foot sharpshooter at this juncture. He has been a true favorite of Jazz officials, sources said, but Utah has indeed left opposing executives with a sense that market is no longer untouchable 
in trade conversations, a tangible change from previous transaction windows. And there was also some teams named that could be intrigued by getting Lori Marketed. The Atlanta Hawks, the Sacramento Kings, and the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Hawks are intriguing to me, I'll say that, because they kind of stink. And the question is, how far do you want to go down this rabbit hole of the current roster build they are in? Is the Trey Young, DeJounte Murray backcourt going to work for the long term? Are they a front court piece away from working? I don't really know if they are. I think the Hawks, if anything, should trade DeJounte Murray and uh, see what they could get back in return and continue with a different build. The Kings are certainly intriguing because Sabonis is there. Fox, Hegan Murray's been going crazy. They can use a consistent score outside of Sabonis in that front court. Question is, what would they be willing to offer? Because I bet the Jazz are going to want Keegan Murray. And I don't know if the Kings would be wanting to cash in Keegan Murray for the services of Lori Market. And the Thunder, who really intrigued me, we'll get to that in a bit. But first, Kevin O'Connor kind of mentioned what his trade value would be. And he said that the first impression from talking to teams is that it's something resembling the haul the Jazz received for Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. So five-ish first-round picks and players of comparable value, which is why the Thunder really intrigued me as a trade partner for a Lori Marketing. When you think of what they can do with that starting lineup is something out of a fever dream. And stay with me, you're probably getting rid of Josh Giddy. Obviously, there's a lot of rumors surrounding him. Utah's no stranger to that scenario. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, I cracked myself up there, guys. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help myself. I had to do it. All right, back on track. Let's get back on the trade moving forward. They also have a boatload of picks, though. So you combine Josh Giddy. You combine the a million first-round picks they have, and that can meet the price point Danny Ainge has set in Utah. And this is your potential starting lineup. SGA, Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, who's been phenomenal this year. Lori Marketed at the four, and Chet Holmgren at the center, causing one of the best young front courts in the association with J-Dub, Lori Marketed, and Chet Holmgren. This team right here. The Thunder are top three in the West. There's question marks if they could win a title this season with how well they have progressed. I think they are a piece away or one more year away. They can accelerate that timeline by getting Lori Market in and creating one of the better front courts in the NBA and most well-balanced scoring teams in the association as well. The Thunder are a team that I'm keeping my eye out on. I out for Lori Market in. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, I appreciate you staying throughout the entire video. If you want more NBA trade rumors, we are the number one spot for you. So subscribe here to us at Chat Sports. It's youtube.com slash Chat Sports TV. I promise you won't regret it. So Nick Roloff signing off. I'll see you on the next video.